Long before I was hip to the David Lynch film, I knew Eraserhead as the nickname for Kid, the main character in House Party. So called because of his afro-licious high top fade and tall lanky frame, resembling a number two pencil. Herbert Master frame here, in the house once again with a look back at the innocence of high school dance parties and early 90s hip hop. A precursor to the classic stoner flick Friday, House Party is about one night, a school night no less, when plays, that's Kid's co-star and partner in rhyme, parents go away for a quick trip, thereby allowing their son to turn their home into one big dance floor. Every good party needs a dope DJ, and to fill this role we have fresh-faced and funky-breathed Martin Lawrence as Bilal, a.k.a. DJ Dragon Breath. His vinyl is outweighed only by his nasty-ass mouth smells, which drives away the girls he desperately lusts for. Speaking of girls, there are two cuties with booties on the scene. Tisha Campbell as rich girl Sydney, and Adrian Joy Johnson as hood rat Shireen. Really, though, they're both great young women and friends caught up in the teenage love games that we all love to play. There's a goofy exuberance to the party scenes and awkward hormonal exchanges, evidenced by lots of elbows swinging and arms waving around on the dance floor. The choreographed dance-off between kid and play and the girls is especially memorable for the genuine camaraderie displayed. Like Harry Belafonte and Danny Kaye performing Mama Look a Boo Boo. It is this manly tenderness and confident vulnerability towards your fellow man that is so often lost to machismo and money-making competition. Take the classic rap battle, for example. It starts with disses and clever one-liners, but ends in mutual respect for lyrical finesse and microphone showmanship. Ah, the good old days. Home with your grumpy but big-hearted dad, here played by Robin Harris as Pop a quieter, gentler version of Ice Cube's on-screen cartoon Father and Friday. Actually, this is where his character was seemingly birthed. You'll recognize the same crusty curmudgeon barking from the second story window. Typical situation. He's trying to sleep and the music is bumping next door. So what's he to do? The big no-no. He calls the popo. Without a doubt, the cops are the usual A-cab, A-hole stereotypes harassing good people in their own communities for the age-old reasons we've come to correct but still struggle with too often. To the policemen's credit, they do prevent homoerotic slash homophobic full force from burning Play's parents' house down, but they predictably revert to low-grade villains when they drive the bullies down to the docks to presumably beat them with their clubs. This scene takes place off-screen, otherwise this mostly light-hearted, fun-natured comedy might have taken a darker turn into social justice commentary. As it goes, the brutality is only suggested and the cops are just jokes with guns. What makes House Party hold up today is the charismatic performances across the board. Even bit characters shine, like the drunk dude, the only drunk dude at the entire packed party who speaks in a British accent when he's about to hit on a girl. See, accents are cool, but getting shit-faced drunk is not. Most dated is probably the dose of aforementioned homophobia. The word fag is used as a put-down a couple of times, and there's a moment, toward the end, where the movie turns into a prison-holding cell musical with a fat old bluesman giving Kid a tip on how not to get butt-raped by Bubba and every other horny pervert behind bars. Kid spits a rhyme to fend them off. It's a hip-hop quotable that goes a little something like this. I'm speaking from the heart from the center. The sign on my ass says do not enter. Men's fear of penetration is primordial. Like Friday, the moral core of this story is family, self-respect, and growing into manhood. These are the good boys in the hood you seldom hear about, not the glamorized and celebrated fatherless thugs and criminals of gangster rap lore. Godfather of funk and nasty rap pioneer himself, George Clinton, appears as a washed-up wedding DJ, spinning that good old Bill Withers vinyl. The message is this, know where you came from and party like it's 1990. Lighten up. Yeah, I did it. My cry two tears in a bucket. Fuck it. 